The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft. Once more into a, we, the breach we go. Dear friends, as always, we like to meet at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Twenty-two ninety-eight on the S and P cash up almost eighteen points. Volumes good, but not fantastic. Two point four billion shares. So now uh, we've got decent volume. We've got a breakout of previous highs. You know, you've got two things you can do. You can either short the weakest stocks out here. Again, I'm not long or short any of the indexes. I've been going after individual stocks, and you know you. You never quite know when the rug pull's going to happen. The one thing that I do think, though, now is that uh, you kind of have to wait if you don't have a position. You have to either, in the indexes, you need to wait for a pullback. Don't know when that's going to come. Or you have to go after individual stocks, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, added a couple yesterday. It looks like I'm going to be pretty much right on one and uh, wrong on the other. We'll see how the day comes out. I'll be, you know, a little bit wrong on one. Um, and uh, I think vastly right on the other one. Uh, but we'll have to look. I was looking at options out in March. So we got, I got a little bit of time here. Um, but uh, you got a little bit of a pop here today. I dislike the volume in a lot of the individual stocks that I'm tracking. So that uh, I should be, you know, there's a couple of them that should have a million and a half shares, uh, turning about 400, maybe 500,000 shares in a couple of them. So this is kind of one of these days where you start separating the wheat and the chaff. I told somebody yesterday, I could see being long and short maybe the rest of this year unless something truly breaks. Uh, what you would probably like to see is a light volume pullback and then a push. We had all that kind of sideways movement. What you really want to watch out for, of course, is if uh, you're in stocks that are fairly dangerous out here, uh, they can uh, move up as f uh, and down as fast as they've moved down or up. So uh, this is going to be a little bit more tricky than we've had for a while. You may not get all the time that you need to get in and out of position. But uh, again, a lot of earnings, uh, some more tonight, uh, some of the big ones tomorrow night. Of course, we had uh, crude come out with numbers today. Didn't seem to really uh, affect it that much. A lot of weakness in gold, but maybe not enough. Kind of tough to say. And uh, who would think that uh, we would be talking about wall stocks and not on Wall Street? Uh, building the wall, concrete, steel, barbed wire. I don't know where I'd go to buy barbed wire. I guess there's probably a barbed wire store. Anyway, um, all of those things and much more today. But again, we've got uh, a decent movement. It's not bad enough to say pull the ripcord and we're going south, nor is it enough to really say that there's a lot of upside in this market. What I will say is that risk reward on buying puts does not probably get much better than it gets today. That is, if you are thinking long, it is incredibly cheap to buy insurance. So if you are thinking about putting on a position now, I don't know how you could without maybe buying the corresponding puts. They are so cheap as to be ridiculous out into March. And uh, I'm kind of a contrarian. Someone called me a counterculture trader last week in a nice way. And to me, I always am fearful at highs. I'm always greedy at lows. You have to kind of... Uh, you have to kind of, uh, what was the Jesse Livermore quote? You have to, re you have to reverse your national, uh, natural instincts. You have to be fearful at highs. You have to be uh, uh, greedy at lows. 
Uh, and a lot of people kind of look the other way. Now, we've had a nice run out here. Uh, could we easily pull back 30 points in the uh, S&P tomorrow? I don't think that would be on the scope of reason, nor would it blow away the bull case. I'm just saying, uh, just thinking that we've, in any kind of risk reward, you have to say how much higher against how much lower if you could get just a natural pullback, not something. Uh, we're not talking about the end of the world, just a natural pullback. And my thoughts are, you know, you get a couple of bad earnings numbers out there. You get a little people. The market is very jittery. So I'm not going to be surprised if we have some big movement to the downside. But um, there's a great passage in Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Tlaib. And he comes uh, in, this, in the story in the book. Uh, he has to go in and talk to a lot of people. Uh, most of these people uh, he's a pretty smart guy. Uh, he pretty much knows that he's working with a bunch of dummies. And he sits down, and a lot of people go, uh, they all go around the table. And I think this is the mid-late 80s. He was working for Niederhofer at the, at the time. And he goes, uh, you know what? I think the one, one guy says the market's going to go up. The other one goes says it's going to go up. And Nassim says, you know what? I think the market's going to go up, too. So I'm going to buy some more puts, S&P puts. And everybody goes, well, you think the market's going down? No, I think the market's going up. I think that there's an 80% chance the market goes up another 15 S&P points. Remember, this is 1980, in the 1980s. He says, but there's that 20% where it's going down 200 points. So which side would you rather be on? And that is always uh, what you want to think about, and that is the total risk reward if you're wrong. And even if it's a small uh, downside, uh, what is the cost of covering that downside with some kind of hedge? And right now, it's just so ridiculously low that it's hard for me to get very excited about longs right now. To me, even a 20% chance of moving back down to 2040 right now has a ton more money in it in if you're buying the options than 20 points higher in the S&P cash. So call me a contrarian, call me anything but late to dinner. Uh, this is always a point where you start seeing incredible values in puts and not what you would think. Most people do not have the constitution to go, you know what, I think there's a 90% chance that this market's going 10% higher. There's a 10% chance that it's going much lower. So I'll butt on the 10% chance, know that I will be wrong the next nine times. And on the 10th time, I'll make four times the amount of money that I lost in the previous nine times. It is incredibly hard to do that as a trader, to be wrong. But it's incredibly profitable if you understand uh, how much money you will make when the market is wrong. And that's kind of the way I'm thinking today. That is that I can't find anybody that doesn't think the market's going higher. And when I do that, I'm more than willing to put a little money into puts out there because the uh, big side of the market out there is not the 10 points or 15 or 20 points higher. It is that surprise to the downside when no one else is short. We'll be back after this short time out. We'll be uh, taking your phone calls at 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And a pretty good question from our previous host out there, uh, Mr. Steve Rhodes. I call him the professor. He calls himself something else. Um... I always think of him as the Rhodes Scholar. Just questions about what I'm talking about. And it's more of an individual stock issue than the uh, S&Ps overall. Uh, I use those as an example from the book. But I'm looking at quite individually stocks out there and super light volume on some of these individual stocks going back up and retesting highs today on far too light a volume. Why the indexes have a ton of volume out here. That always, that divergence always worries me a little. But again, you can have an 80% chance that the market goes 20% higher. I mean, not 20%, but 20 points higher in the S&P cash. But uh, some stocks can still uh, fall by the wayside. It's not uncommon, especially when you're pushing highs out here, where a lot of stocks are priced for perfection, um, where you can make money going short stocks in an up market. And uh, you know what? Uh, in an up market, that's where you get some of the wickedest uh, individual stock moves because everybody's long. There aren't a lot of shorts to buy on the way back down. And if, uh, you know, you don't want to buy, try to short Boeing or Apple or all the other stuff that everybody's consistently always talking about uh, on CNBC, you want to find stocks that probably they, people haven't been talking about for a few days on CNBC uh, and look for blow off tops. Uh, normally, uh, when the shorts give up, that's when the big downside comes. And there are so many stocks out here that are ridiculously priced, especially in the maybe around the tech field. Uh, maybe you get this, this stock right, maybe you don't. Normally, there's a little a downside, or let me put it upside. You're going to get stopped out in your short. But uh, a lot of these stocks are just ludicrously priced. I wouldn't say all of them. But, you know, you can find 10 or 15 or 20 of them. And uh, will the market move up? Probably. And what's more than anything that you hate is the market goes higher and your stock goes lower. Uh, but there are a lot of stocks out there that look like they've topped out. And I'm not talking about puts 
for tomorrow. Um, I started a couple positions yesterday, and I'm looking out till March. So uh, I'm not predicting anything in the next five minutes or ten minutes. Uh, I don't even look at charts that are less than daily. Uh, there are some reasons why, but uh, that's kind of it. Anyway, let's uh, get to some history. We'll talk more about uh, at least my theories on trading. But first, we have to start with a little bit of history. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And yes, we will get to my thoughts on the VIX here because uh, I've been one to, to uh, play quite a bit. And we'll talk about uh, that uh, too. So we will get into it. Uh, but uh, first, uh, on this day in 1890, uh, journalist Nellie Bly jumps off a train in New York City exactly 72 days, 6 hours, 11 minutes, and 14 seconds after she boarded an eastbound ocean liner to prove that she could circle around the globe faster than Phileas T. Fogg, the fictional hero of Jules Verne around the world in 80 days. Among many of the modes of transportation, she uses uh, a burrow horse, sampan rickshaw, her daily dispatches and her astonishing speed of her trip enthall newspaper readers and make the world seem small for the first time. What they don't say in this article is that a competing newspaper that sponsored uh, both of these, uh, there were two people racing around the world, and this uh, other gentleman was doing it for a competing newspaper, was going to beat her. And uh, one of her uh, companions uh, made sure that somehow... Uh, his ticket had been canceled and refunded so that uh, he couldn't beat her there on that day, actually today, in 1890. But uh, it was a big horse race of uh, two journalists going around the world with daily dispatches until they got there. I can't remember what, exactly what it was, but I think it was like some ship out of China, and they were both uh, sitting there uh, ready to go on these uh, ships to the United States. And one ship was much faster, and the other guy from the other newspaper was on that ship, and they, uh, the ship was full, and they, <laughs> uh, one guy went in there, acted like the guy, told him that he didn't need to go, got the refund for his ticket, so the guy didn't even have the money to actually get on the next freighter out there. And uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, uh, but uh, you got to figure out 1980, a lot of those shenanigans went on, but uh, you know Nellie Bly. You don't know the other guy, do you? Uh, anyway, never short a quiet market. The uh, last day out here is what I was looking at. But again, I said uh, what you wanted to see is this market move up. Uh, the shorts quit shorting. That's normally happened. You get a pullback. That pullback uh, will tell us whether or not you want to buy the retrace uh, with the volume and whether or not sh uh, people that are shorting the market quit. Uh, if they uh, pile back in up here, then again, they'll probably just get squeezed one more level higher. And uh, like I said, not making any calls on individual uh, indexes. I am kind of focused on individual stocks. We did clear out of a couple of the cement and rail stocks yesterday. We got a little bit more up here, but uh, as I always uh, say at the end of the show, so when you can, not when you have to. A couple of people asking me about uh, what's going on with the VIX out here. I always like the VIX when this thing is low. One way is, of course, uh, playing some of the leverage ETFs on uh, VIX products. What most people have never figured out, and I still hear, I'm trying to remember if I've ever found anybody that actually explains the leverage VIX products the way that I understand them. I actually built a model. But if you look at any other kind of oscillator that's in uh, the uh, stock market for an indicator like a MACD, and you, you're basically looking at two different moving averages or an average of an average or something like that, oscillators move back and forth. And because the VIX is only the premiums on the out of the money, puts and calls in the S&P 500, and it's at two different time frames, uh, 24 days and 36 days. It actually used to be on 24 days and 45 days. I actually liked it better then. Uh, it actually moves a little less now because you've got a, a shorter time frame for the longer time frame. But there are times when both of those are down 
and you can actually be in the VIX leverage products, and you might find five to ten days where, uh, if you've ever been in an airplane or a boat where there's two different engines going at two different speeds, and you hear that wow, 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 you get that oscillation uh, of the phases of the sounds from both engines or whatever you're thinking of. That is what kind of what you're waiting for. There is going to be a time when the speed of one of those oscillations matches the speed of the other ones, and you can be in one of those leveraged products for a while. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened for a while. I haven't played them uh, very much. Can't remember, but I think the last time I played the UVXY, it went from 22 to 27 or something like that. Uh, but again, you've got to look at that more mathematically uh, than technically and know when you can be in it and also know when the market is ready for it. I don't see that today. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I'll add something because we've got some comments in the den. There's another great passage in Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Tlaib. And in it, Jimmy, he quotes Jimmy Rogers, uh, who, of course, was another famous guy that traded with George Soros in the late 80s. And actually, uh, Nassim Tlaib worked for him. 
uh, for a while. Either they were both at the Soros place. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look at the book. But he basically taking Jimmy Rogers to task because Jimmy Rogers commissioned a bunch of his guys to go out there and look at options. And this is before Black Shoals, but it still pretty much uh, follows somewhere around. And that was Jimmy Rogers said, I'd never, ever buy calls or puts. Uh, I always sell them because 85% of them uh, go uh, unexecuted. Uh, uh, it's the quickest way to go to the poorhouse. And I hear a lot of mathematical arguments about all kinds of things, even the VIX, uh, with a similar ban. And the answer is, yes, that's actually true, except it's not always true. And that's what you want to look at. Nassim Tlaib has made billions. Uh, last time I looked, three and a half, five and a half billion. Uh putting a thumb in Jimmy Rogers' eye and doing exactly the opposite of what Jimmy Rogers says. But guess what? He wasn't buying at the money puts and calls. He was buying way out of the money puts and calls. He may spend two years buying way out of the money puts and calls, but guess what? When they come in, 100 to 1, 200 to 1, so the question isn't whether or not, again, the beginning of my discussion, isn't going to be whether you lose. It's going to be your win-loss ratio and how much money you made when you won compared to how much money when you lost. And especially in some products like options, if you can buy them very cheap, you can, you know, you can be wrong 10 times and make uh, 50 times back on that 10th time. So that's kind of my discussion out there. It's not easy trading for a lot of people. It's tough. They tend to go for what they know, which is, you know what? I made 5% on the last trade or 10% on the last trade. Eh, I, you know, do I make trades like that? The answer is yes. But what I live for are when everybody in the world says the market's going higher or the market's going lower and they're scared to death or they're greedy. And guess what? The options are dirt cheap. Now, he has to, because he runs a big fund, always be invested with those out of the money puts and calls. I just wait until there's that big hanging fastball right down the center of the plate. And uh, that's it. So, and then we'll go back to the short discussion on the any kind of uh, ETF that relies on uh, uh, puts and calls, uh, that it relies on an oscillator. Uh, of uh, of uh, different time frames going on. And again, like I said, what you will find out is if you use something, I think somebody said something about some moving average in there. That's not the moving average you want to use on those. You want to go back and look and see what the moving average is of actually what the product is. In the case of uh, the VIX, that's 24 and 36 days. If anybody wants to dig into this, it's more of a mathematical argument. It's not going to be one that makes you feel great because there's some kind of magic bullet out there in a moving average that solves this for you. It's going to be a deep understanding and maybe even building a model that does that. But uh, I would recommend highly reading, uh, especially on the UVXY and some of the other ones, reading the white paper uh, from the CBOE. And uh, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to send you the link. But read the whole thing. Read the mathematical way that it's calculated. Look at the 24 to 36-day moving average, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, of that beat frequency oscillator. That's what they call it in radio. When you get two different signals and you put them together, or uh, eh, if you've been in a twin-engine plane or a twin engine boat, and you heard that beat signal, wow, 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 until they get both engines running at the same speed. Uh, there is a slight mathematical edge that you have on the market if you get those right. Same way if you were counting cards at the casino. They don't like you to do it because guess what? It works. There are a few times when you can push your luck. And uh, like I said, 
not a lot of time right now. I don't see anything in the VIX products that say that I would want to buy a a uh, call in the UX, uh, UVXY today. But there's going to be that time when that 36, 24 day lines up and you're going to be able to be in that for a handful of days without it decaying through the floor on you. I think we had a call coming in on, it was, I think just before I left for Christmas. So it had to be like the first or second week of December. And the guy called in, I said, hey, the problem is you, you've got that long 36 day uh, average uh, of the, um, out of the, uh, out of this next month, not this month's S&P futures. And those are gonna be a problem as those, the long ones, even if you get movement in the short 24 day period, the one that's out 36 days is gonna kill you because no one's gonna do anything out there on the 36 day because you're basically in the last few days of the year and that is going to kill you. There's no way, even in short-term uh, volatility, is going to move the VIX products up into the end of the year. So uh, you really need to, it is one of the things I love to trade, but again, the stars all have to align to make it right. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, our engineer likes me because I said BFO, which is Beat Frequency Oscillator for Single Sideband Radio. Uh, da, 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 what else do we have out here? Uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at uh, that. Uh, get, got our first email of the day. And the uh, people want to know about, uh, what is this? Uh, I don't know who it is or where he's from. So it's I'm going to call him Jim from Lutz, Florida. Just put that in there so I can always keep you guys straight. Uh, it's always hard for my feeble mind to uh, keep in there. But uh, what do we have out here? Any thoughts on Las Vegas Sands tonight? LVS. Um, the biggest problem I have with this one, <laughs> you got absolutely nothing out here. Uh, but you're going to have a decent move. My guess is, I think I'll look at the options during the uh, break. But my guess is you're going to have uh, four or five point move out here before the uh, after the bell tonight. You're either going to go down to 52, 54, or be up to somewhere around 63 bucks. I don't see this thing sitting out here not doing anything. But I can't tell you that you got a good read. I can tell you that you've got a lot of energy built up in Las Vegas sands. These stocks going sideways into earnings uh, can really surprise. Uh, my guess is this is either going to 63.38 or 52.54 uh, or maybe even a little lower if things go bad. I dislike this huge volume down day if we go back to the 8th of December. So I'd be more to think 52.54. We'll be back after this. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, somebody was saying something about Krugman writing an article about something. And the only thing I can think of is between Krugman and Kudlow, I'm trying to remember who is more often wrong than those two and how, as an economist, you can be continually wrong. And as long as everybody likes what you say, uh, you continue to be on TV. But there's two sides of a coin there with both those guys. They're always wrong. And no one ever says anything about it. <laughs> Anybody that's an economist seems to be continually wrong. And there's no big price to pay. And uh, I'm always wondering if the people that hire these folks at the big Wall Street firms just take whatever they say and do the opposite. I always wonder if they just think that's it. But zero downside to being an a, 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 a economist. Uh, and, of course, the people that are continually wrong as economists are now mad because there aren't a lot of economists in the government. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> they've thrown them off because they've been so continually wrong. Anyway, I always thought that there would be an interesting um, index, which was just the counter of all of the blowhards in, uh, uh, that are economists that never really uh, have to be right. Anyway, uh, a lot of people asking me, hey, Dave, where do I get all the weightings for the S&P 500? How big is... Uh, Apple now in the indexes. That has been kind of a very hard question to answer. And the markets, uh, at least the people in the S&P 500, the people in the NASDAQ, don't like anybody to see it. This site right now is up and has them. If uh, you're just listening and you don't want to write it down, you can email me and I'll be glad to send you uh, the links to it. But uh, the Slick Charts page does have the S&P 500 uh, weightings for every stock uh, by weight for both the NASDAQ and the S&P. And, you know, we've got Apple down a little bit. It used to be 14% of the market. It's now just 10.8% of the NASDAQ 100. Uh, but we still have the top six uh, still being more than 50% of the market out there. And part of that is because they equally weight both levels of Google in it, which is ridiculous. They should just have one or the other. Both of them are in the mid 4%. So uh, literally Google is 9% and Apple is only what a little less than 11%. So again, when I talk about, I don't spend a lot of time on the NASDAQ or the Dow because literally they are uh, worse than noise for me uh, for the most part. And while you can trade them, uh, the underlying stocks 
really you should just make an index of the top six and forget everything else. Uh, I don't know why you should just call it the NASDAQ six. Anyway, um, we've talked about the statistics underlying that, and that is if you assume a world of about 5,000 stocks that are truly trading stocks that have more than 3,000 or 300,000 shares on average traded on a daily day, which at that point you start to see some real significance in chart work start to come. You know, if you're talking about stocks with 50,000 shares a day, anything can happen. The entrances are way too uh, narrow and the exits are the same. So those things wildly gestate. But um, this is it. Anyway, if you want to look at all of that, uh, I'll be glad to uh, send it to you. Just email me at path at tfnn.com. Again, don't look for this page to last very long. Uh, the S&P 500 people really hate uh, giving away the formula, kind of like the Coca-Cola people that have the formula uh, locked away in a safe. Uh, can you figure it out? The answer is yes. It's more marketing than anything else. They don't like you using the S&P 500 without paying them. My guess is this website does not pay anyone. Uh, they just figured out a way to back out all the weightings in the market. And uh, you'll probably last six months or a year, and eventually they'll get a letter saying, pay me a lot of money if you want to continue publishing this kind of information, and it will slowly go away. Anyway, uh, what else did we have going on out here? Uh, to, any other questions? Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. 2296 uh, and 2297. Volume is 2.65 billion shares. Let's go through the ones that are gapping up today. Having a lot of chance. As I said before, if there was a stock I wasn't going to short, it would have been Boeing. I hate shorting stocks where the uh, if even half the orders go away, you still have three, four years of building in the pipeline. It seems like that's always a silly short to me. You know, you had some downside for a little while in this stock. Got to 100 bucks. Uh, that would have been where you bought it. I just don't understand it. There's a lot of stocks where the wheels are literally falling off the wagon. I don't know why you wouldn't go after that. A uh, little bit of a reversal in Alibaba from its jump up yesterday, but uh, not that big a one. BP and T uh, again a little higher. Now, when we look in it, uh, Citigroup uh, kind of uh, hit its high. It's pulled back a little bit uh, from its move. In fact, uh, let's take a look at its retracement out here. Uh, da -da -da. You know. Um, if you look at this thing on a bigger time frame, uh, we'll look, keep pulling it back here until we get one. Um, it could go back to this gap, which is about a 50% movement of it. Uh, 49.84 is the smaller 50% pullback. 47 dollars and 94 cents is the larger of these. If you look at the February 11th swing point or the June 27th swing point. So I wouldn't be buying it here, but uh, you got a nice big fat consolidation area. Uh, that means that this is gonna be kind of noisy, but what you do have is that high volume thrust up uh, that happens around the 9th of November. And my guess is that's where you would wanna buy that. It's about 51 bucks. Uh, this thing may do a nice slow ABC down into that $51 area. But that's where you would want to buy the retrace on it. Caterpillar, another one with a nice gap up today. Uh, again, you've got three gaps now in this. So you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, I would have I think, thought you would need a much bigger gap to qualify for a three-gap play. So not really making that as a call. Uh, but uh, again... If I bought this, it certainly would have to, I'd have to be looking at it at 86 bucks. So again, need kind of a nice retracement here. If you're not already in it, no reason to go buy it out here. Credit Suisse, a nice pop today. Not that much volume though. And of course, uh, you've got Deutsche Bank doing the same, which is a nice pop up here. Now this one giving you a little bit more of a signal. March 14th, you had 10 million shares. Uh, at $20.70, you've gone through that today, about 8 million shares. So you're going to maybe tie the volume. That's not a big sign of strength out there. You wanted to see a little bit more. Not only that, but uh, as we go back into some of these, uh, you have some significant gaps 
that you're going to have to get through. Now, in Deutsche Bank, it is this gap down that started uh, pretty much the whole shebang, which goes back to the 15th of January in 2016. Now, you needed about uh, the first day on that day was like 3 million shares. You finally got about where we're at now with about 7.1 million shares. So you've kind of made it through there, but the big resistance is going to be just under 22 bucks. 20, let's call it 22, uh, 2180. You really want to see just a buck higher what this thing starts to do there. When we come back, we'll look at General Motors and a few others. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, a suggestion out there from uh, Steve Rhodes about you can go to the... Uh, Spider's website and take a look at it and download it in a spreadsheet. And uh, I don't know, a lot of people don't have spreadsheets, at least a lot of people that I talk to don't. So it's just an easier way of actually looking at it without having to download anything into a spreadsheet. Many people are spreadsheet literate, some are not. This is just an easy way to look at it. Uh, da -da -da -da. What else is out here? Um, well, we were looking through these. Uh, General Motors gapped up today. Again, a lot of these just making continuous 52-week highs. Nice pop-up in this one. Again, uh, like I said, uh, probably the most troubling thing 
you know, not extremely troubling, but troubling is a lot of stocks without volume on the way up. This is where you start separating the wheat from the chaff. Uh, Huntington Bank shares a nice gap up. Volume again, you look at these last couple of days, you know, you would like to see maybe a little bit more juice uh, on these days where you have big gaps up. Again, a lot of these gaps up haven't really turned into some huge volume. I would kind of like to see something like 26 million shares, about 13 million shares in uh, H Ban today. HBI, which is uh, Haynes Brands, nice gap up. Again, you know, you've got some of these days that really came down with some energy. Uh, 30, what is it? 37.4 million shares on the 7th of December for Haynes Brand. It's up and through that today with about 7 million shares. Normally, you get a little bit of a pushback on that eventually. Uh, this one's got kind of a nice move that you could get maybe up to the 26, uh, 2650 level on it. Um, nice move. Volume did pick up previously, but it's not the kind of giant uh, sign out here that says that you won't move back. I don't know if there's problems in the cotton industry, uh, but you never know. Uh, Jet Blue, nice pop back up after it's been moving down several days gapped up but again um as you look through the indexes a lot of juice when i look through these individual stocks not so much um jp morgan's up but again volume at least so far today we'll see how these things close out uh, just seem to be a little bit uh, lacking in the individual stocks uh big move today on seagate uh they basically said uh don't believe anybody that uh, says we're not selling hard drives. Uh, I was looking for some kind of blow off, uh, and this one has given a huge amount of cash back. It got to $46.68, still holding, you know, above that $42 level, but uh, kind of good. But you know what? In a sign of strength, I would have rather seen this thing have a little bit better candle out here, maybe not giving back all of that stuff. And that's what I'm just saying, that maybe uh, – Maybe the indexes continue to move higher, but there's a lot of stocks out here that look like they may be in problems. This one, when you really look at it, is just the huge downside uh, that this is running to the, the supply line. Going back to October 14th of 2015, this thing has just hit that gap. Everybody that's been stuck in this one for the last year or so is going, thank God, they're kissing the ground. They're yelling up uh, and running up and down the streets going, you know what? I got my cash back. I'm out of this dog for the uh, for this time. Let me run. And that is, again, another problem. Even though we're headed higher in the in the indexes out here I, on a handful of stocks, um, how much are you going to give back? Where are you running into supply lines? Tend to be a much bigger question that I'm looking at today. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. Hang on for the Tom O'Brien Show in the next two hours. Got uh, plenty of earnings in the 4 o'clock hour. So uh, lots of stuff to catch up on. And uh, then tomorrow, I'll see you here. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.